At one point or another, we've all heard of some pretty interesting war leaders from history. Some of those names may be plastered into your mind for either good or bad reasons. Regardless, history has seen the rise and fall of all sorts of war generals. So in this video, we'll look more into some of the smartest generals and their eventual downfalls. First, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great was a Macedonian ruler and one of history's greatest military minds who, as king of Macedonia, built the largest empire the ancient world had ever seen. It's no wonder he's called the Great. Many conquered lands still have the Greek influence Alexander introduced, and some cities he founded remain important cultural centers until this day. The period of history from his death to 31 BC, when his empire folded, would officially be known as the Hellenistic period. Alexander was said to be a great strategist, but his life was cut short at the age of 32. Some historians say Alexander died of malaria or other natural causes. Others believe he was poisoned. Either way, he never never named a successor. His death and the bloody infighting for control that happened afterwards caused the empire that he'd fought so hard to create to fall apart. Next, the infamous Napoleon. We can't make a video like this without mentioning Le L'Empereur himself. Napoleon Bonaparte, also known as Napoleon I, was a French military leader and emperor who conquered a lot of Europe in the early 19th century. Born in Corsica, Napoleon rapidly rose through the ranks of the military during the French Revolution, which took place from 17 1789 to 1799. Napoleon's various reforms left a lasting mark on the institutions of France and a lot of Western Europe in general. But his driving passion was the military expansion of French dominion. Even at the time of his fall, he left France little larger than it had been at the beginning of the French Revolution. He was almost unanimously revered during his lifetime, and until the end of the Second Empire under his nephew Napoleon III as one of history's greatest heroes. But on April the 12th, 1814, Napoleon Napoleon was forced to give up his throne after allied Austrian, Prussian, and Russian forces vanquished his army and took over Paris. Banished into exile on Elba, he returned less than a year later to try and challenge the weak Bourbon king who had replaced him. And now, Khalid ibn al-Walid. Khalid was a companion of the Prophet Muhammad and one of the Islamic Empire's most capable military leaders. In 14 battles, he remained undefeated against the Byzantine Empire and the Sassanid Persians. He also played a big role in spreading Islam to the greater Middle East. Khalid played the leading military role in the Rida Wars against rebel tribes in Arabia in the years 632 to 633, the campaigns in Sasasni in Iraq in 633 to 634, and the conquest of Byzantine Syria in 634 to 638. Being a staple of the Khwaris tribe's aristocratic clan, the Maksum, which vehemently opposed Muhammad, Khalid played a key role in defeating the Muslims at the Battle of Uhud in 25. Khalid continued service as the key assistant of his successor Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah in sieges like the Battle of Quinisrin, which collectively brought about the retreat from Syria of Imperial Byzantine troops under Emperor Heraclius. Umar dismissed Khalid from his governorship of Quinisrin afterward, and he died either in Medina or Oms in 642. Coming up, Frederick the Great. Frederick the Great, or Frederick II, was the ruler of Prussia from 1740 until his death in 1786. By winning wars and expanding territories, he established Prussia as a strong military power. He ruled for more than 40 years and commanded troops in 14 battles across Europe. Being an enlightened absolute monarch, he preferred the French language and art and even built a French Rococo palace. Sans Souci, close to Berlin today. Frederick won a great victory at the Battle of Torgau, which secured Berlin from any further attacks. However, also in this battle, Frederick became a casualty when he was hit in the chest by a by 1761, both the Austrian and Prussian military forces were so worn out that no significant battles were fought between them. In failing to deal a fatal blow to his enemy's armies, combined with failing to deal with them as much politically through lasting and binding alliances, Frederick failed to protect his country beyond his death. And now, Julius Caesar. Gaius Julius Caesar was a Roman general and statesman. Being a member of the First Triumvirate, he led the Roman armies in the Gallic Wars before defeating his political rival Pompey in a civil war, and as a result became dictator of Rome from 49 BC until his assassination in 44 BC. Caesar effectively changed the course of the history of the Greco-Roman world irreversibly. The Greco-Roman society has been extinct for so long that most of the names of its great men mean little to the average modern person. But Caesar's name, like Alexander's, is still on people's lips throughout many groups. Even people who know nothing of Caesar as a historic personality are still aware of his family name 
name as a title signifying a ruler who was unique. But not everyone enjoyed his rule and agreed with it. Julius Caesar was assassinated by about 40 Roman senators who stabbed him on March 15, 44 BC. Caesar's death resulted in a long series of civil wars that ended in the overall tragic death of the Roman Republic and the birth of the new Roman Empire. Now let's talk about Arthur Wellesley, 1st Duke of Wellington. Arthur Wellesley, 1st Duke of Wellington, was an Anglo-Irish soldier and Tory statesman who was one of the leading military and political figures of 19th century Britain, serving twice as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. To add to that list, he was also known to be Napoleon's number one enemy at the time. It's a pretty big deal to be the guy who delivered a solid defeat to Napoleon himself. The Duke of Wellington led a total of 18 battles. The Duke's aim was to achieve a strong and balanced government by reuniting the conservative Tory party. Having reluctantly resigned again as commander-in-chief, he invited the Canning Guys, headed by William Huskinson, to serve, while dropping the ultra Tories as incompatible with his policy of moderation. With the right wing thus alienated, a chasm began to open on the left. The opposition's demand for extensive reforms met with sympathy from Huskinson's group. Wisely, the Duke retreated, first on a church issue, himself reforming the Test and Corporations Act that penalized nonconformists, and again on a corn law which prohibited importation of cheaper foreign grains, introducing a more liberal reform than he and the agricultural interest desired. Coming up, Takeda Shingen. Takeda Shingen of Kai province was a preeminent daimyo in feudal Japan. Known as the Tiger of Kai, he was one of the most powerful daimyo with exceptional military prestige in the late stage of the Sengoku period. Shingen was a warlord of great skill and military leadership. Being one of the best military minds in feudal Japan is a really big deal, because almost everyone seemed to be a military mind and being better than someone else might mean you get challenged to a duel. After 18 battles, the Tiger of Kai reigned supreme, in Japan anyway. Five inconclusive battles fought between Takeda's forces and the Uesugi armies on the Kawanakajima Plain in northern Shinano in 1554, 1555, 1557, 1561, and 1564 became the subject of numerous folk tales and legends. And now, Hannibal Bursa. Hannibal was a Carthaginian general and statesman who commanded the forces of Carthage in their battle against the Roman Republic during the Second Punic War. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest military commanders in history. In 218 BC, Hannibal attacked Segunto, modern Segunto, Spain, an ally of Rome in Hispania, and sparked the Second Punic War. Hannibal invaded Italy by crossing the Alps with North African war elephants. In his first few years in Italy, he won a succession of victories at the Battle of the Trebia, Lake Tresemene, and Cannae, inflicting heavy losses on the Romans. Hannibal was distinguished for his ability to determine both his and his opponents' respective strengths and weaknesses, and to plan battles accordingly. His well-planned strategies allowed him to conquer an ally with several Italian cities that were previously allied to Rome. Hannibal's greatest downfall was his inability to persuade Rome's Latin and Italian allies to turn against the Roman Empire, as was his original strategy. He underestimated the Italian and Latin allies' allegiance, or fear of, the Roman Empire. And finally, Ulysses S. Grant. Ulysses S. Grant was an American military officer and politician who served as the 18th President of the United States from 1869 to 1877. As commanding general, he led the Union Army to victory in the American Civil War in 1865, and thereafter briefly served as the Secretary of War. In 1865, as commanding general, Ulysses S. Grant led the Union armies to victory over the Confederacy in the American Civil War. As an American hero, Grant was later elected the 18th President of the United States, 1869 to 1877, working to implement Congressional Reconstruction and to remove the vestiges of slavery. But he was inconsistent in his policy supporting Reconstruction. He sent federal troops into South Carolina to protect African American civil rights, but failed to send federal troops into Louisiana and other southern states when Reconstruction began to fail there. That's a wrap for this video. What do you guys think of the leaders mentioned here? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.